Hello, I'm Heath Dawson, Executive Director with The Living Word Outdoor Drama. And I'm Logan Hill, the Artistic Director out at The Living Word. We want to thank you for joining us tonight for our fifth devotional on our Wednesday night series that airs <clears throat> every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Uh, we just want to thank you for joining us tonight. I'm going to take a quick drink here. So tonight's um, devotional, we are going to be looking at Mark chapter 10. Uh, 13 through 16, and it's going to be a, a, a scene that is in our drama. It's going to show you how Jesus a interacts with little children. So we'll be showing that to you uh, and, and reviewing that tonight. So um, first, let's go ahead and talk about gratefulness, uh, some things maybe that you're grateful for in your life, something that's happened in the last week uh, that has happened that you're just so thankful for, and you can see God working wonders in your life. Uh, and then the second thing uh, we want to ask you about is uh, what some challenges you're seeing in your life uh, in, in today's uh, times. You know, uh, have you uh, had a family member maybe that passed away and you're struggling with that? Or maybe somebody treated you wrong and you just can't forgive them. Uh, you know, whatever challenge it is, uh, we, we ask you to write that down at home. Or if it's something that you even want to share, you know, what's your, that you're grateful for or, or your challenge. Share them in the comments here on Facebook and on YouTube, and we, we would like we love as much inter, interaction with people mm -hmm. as we can. Uh, and then the last thing is, how were you able to take last week's uh, message uh, about the blind man and share that with someone? Uh, we're hoping that you were able to do that from last week. So tonight we're going to go ahead and read uh, from Mark 10, 13 through 16, a smaller passage this week, uh, but nonetheless important, as I always say every week. Uh, yeah. Anytime we read God's word, it is very important. He is trying to teach us something. So Logan, why don't you go ahead and, and read for us. Again, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, Mark 10, 13 through 16. One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with the disciples. He said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on their heads and blessed them. Thank you, Logan. Uh, and where he was reading from the NLT, <clears throat> I'll be reading from the NIV. Uh, the little jo children in Jesus. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was ignorant and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. Yeah, I've always struggled with that word. Did I say it right or did I say Indignant. it wrong? Indignant. Indignant. Uh, it's like trying to say rural. Rural. I can never say <laughs> the word R-U-R-A-L. Rural. I, yes, I struggle with it. So, And I struggle with that word every time I read it. I can never get it right. But anyways, um, so let's go ahead and talk about, even though, like I said, um, only a few verses tonight in our devotional. But um, let's talk about it. Uh, what's going on here, Logan, in this passage? So the parents are bringing them to be touched and blessed here. And the disciples get angry and scold the parents for this. And like, hey, why are you bothering him? This isn't right. And he gets angry with them. And this is a, a passage of scripture where he gets angry. And another passage I, I thought of while you were reading indignant, which mm -hmm. is anger. What was it again? Indignant. Indignant. There we go. Which is kind of an anger towards uh you think it was unjust we looked it up before yeah, we started yeah. i'm gonna Un give the i'll give the okay. uh, definition in a minute um so he was angry with them and uh it just it reminds me of when he's angry at the temple hmm. and it also makes me think of uh be angry but sin not mm -hmm. so here he didn't sin when he was angry he was just angry with them and said hey let them come to me because they were coming to be blessed. And so he welcomes them. And I, and I think sometimes we can confuse uh, anger, you know, when, when Jesus is angry here and also in the temple. I think a, a better, more fitting word would be frustration. I think he was just frustrated with him, you know what I mean, with the way he was. Well, it was, it's, 
it is anger because he was angry, but it's a righteous anger. Right, right. It's in, exactly. He was in the right mindset. It right. was, so yeah, he's frustrated and angry and mm -hmm. just there's, there's stuff going on that's not supposed to be happening, like the right. temple and them selling stuff in there when they're not supposed to be. And with this, the children coming and the disciples scolding the parents, he's angry with that because it's, that's, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. what, what the disciples were doing is wrong. What the priests were doing was wrong. Mm -hmm. So it frustrated works too, right. but it is also angry. And anger. Yes, and anger. Uh, Just know, not I, angry like we get. Right, exactly. That's why I say he's kind of more like perturbed and that kind of an yeah. anger. Uh, frustrated, but uh, uh, you know, I'm a big movie buff, so sometimes <clears throat> I would just love to sit and been a, a, a fly on the wall and hear Jesus talk to himself about some of the things that was going on because I could just see him wanting to walk up to one of his disciples' heads and knock on their forehead and say, Hello, McFly, you know, like in Back to the Future. So I just see him <laughs> thinking, You simpletons, what don't you understand? Yeah, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but um, I mean, and obviously, dealing with some of the disciples, he probably just same as way with us. He, he, he just gets frustrated at times with this because he just wants us to understand and get it. And sometimes yeah, we're sometimes slow it's, learners. It's, it's, hey, Heath. Hey, Logan. You got, <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Right. You need to listen. Right. Very slow learners. Yeah. Uh, but um, what's some other things uh, from this passage, Logan? Anything else that sticks out to you? Mm -hmm. um, just how, how much he's welcoming the children there. And like, even though the disciples didn't think he had time for it because they said that you're bothering him. Mm -hmm. So they were saying that his time's precious and you're wasting it. Right. He said, no, no, no. This is what is supposed to happen. This, mm -hmm. Your will isn't what's supposed to happen. It's my will here. Right. And he took that time out to spend with the children and even said that if you don't receive the kingdom of God like a child, you will never enter in. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Um, I want to go back and say uh, the definition of the I word. Indignant. Um, there we go. I was going to let you say it. Um, and what we found out is it's basically, yeah, it's an anger or an, an annoyance uh, at what is perceived as unfair treatment. So here we kind of put ourselves in the context of, of what, what Jesus was feeling. He was annoyed uh, mm -hmm. that his disciples were unfairly mistreating these children. There was no, no, no cause for it. And uh, so Jesus was really annoyed with it. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's kind of what's going on. And, um, you know, I want to go back up and think about children for a second, Logan. I'm going to quiz you. This will be the first time we've quizzed. Name me some characteristics of children. What's some things you can think about children, their, their mannerisms and maybe their, their emotions, th some of those kind of things. I mean, they can be very loving at times. Uh, loving just, is one thing I wrote. Yes. And sure. they can also be annoying yeah. at times <laughs> yeah. where they're doing things right. that you're like, right. what are you doing? Right. And it's just sometimes they don't listen mm -hmm. all the time. And then rambunctious. Yeah. Rambunctious. Mm -hmm. And just, I mean, there's so much. I, and but the good things, what are some good things with children? Let's go that route. You said loving, so you've got yeah. one, one of the words that I wrote down. What's some other things? Um, I mean, they're just, they're such a blessing to mm -hmm. have. And just, it's, it's a good one. I didn't write that one down. So you get extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't have to pass this. <laughs> you have to pass. Yes. This is okay. the test. Um, um, but I don't know exactly what all you've written down well, here. So just here's here's some of the characteristics I wrote down about children. Happy. Yeah. You know? Children mm -hmm. are usually children are generally happy. Mm -hmm. Unless they're obviously throwing a temper upset. tantrum mm -hmm. or upset. But usually they're generally happy. Uh, children are very energetic. Oh like yeah. Always energetic. Way um, more energy than I ever had. Yes. Uh, I would say that children for the most part, especially if you see them with animals, they're very caring. Mm -hmm. And also can be if like, you know, your, your, your oldest daughter with the youngest, probably very nurturing in a lot of ways, you know, sometimes a little too much, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, but they can be nurturing, um, you know, and also kids can be very compassionate, you know, when, when, when they have an accident or something, mm -hmm. you know, one of your children, what are they, what's the first thing they do when they fall down or something? What are they, and they're crying. What are they, who are they well, it depends for? on the child because each one's a little different. <laughs> but, I mean, 
if Isabel or Cassandra falls down, they kind of start crying right away. And right. if Jasmine falls down, she just kind of looks around and goes, uh, that was inconvenient, and just gets up and goes on. <laughs> but they're looking so, for mom and dad, typically, Yeah, right? they're usually looking they're looking for, right. to come to us and mm -hmm. get comforted. Right, yeah, and, 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 that's, and, and a lot of times they can be that way with each other, compassionate. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the other things about children I wrote down is they're dependent. You know, children are very, very dependent. Mm -hmm. uh, they're always... But sometimes they want to be something. independent yes. at the same time until they get to a point where they're like, I need my shoes tied. Yeah, <laughs> and we're diving into where I'm going with this, and that's a good point. So let's talk about uh, what we can learn about God from this passage, and then I'm going to back up and we'll use these things that I kind of wrote down today. So because of talking about children <laughs> here, yeah. it's making me think right. of we are the children, mm -hmm. and we can be a lot of those. Yes. And I mean, we can be the negative things too. Mm hmm Exactly. But God looks at us from a parent perspective, which I love the example of a parent perspective because going back to kind of the temple, I know we're talking about the children here, but going right. back to the temple, when I'm doing that scene, I usually think of it as um, a parent scolding their kids for mm -hmm. doing wrong. And so Jesus is there as a parent teaching us as a parent. And I mean, you sometimes parents, you get a little angry, but you're doing it in a way to help mm -hmm. here. And we, you don't want to go too far to where you're getting angry in a sinful way, but angry in a uh, righteous way, a way mm -hmm. to help the child learn the right way to go. Mm -hmm. and, but at the same time, we need to remember that we are the children of God. So mm -hmm. we're the children as well. And just thinking of God as the parent and listening to his lessons and sometimes we're like children and don't listen and mm -hmm. throw fits and throw temper tantrums. And right. Well, a couple of things is, you know, and, and when we ask you, what can we learn about God? It's also what can we learn about Jesus or even mm -hmm. sometimes the, the Holy Spirit's in mm -hmm. the passage. So what can we learn about the Trinity that's going on in here is, is, is the question always. But uh, what we can learn is, is that, you know, obviously Jesus loves children. Oh, yeah. And, and Jesus is a child his own way too he is a child of god so he he uh i mean he's uh, the is, son of god right he is a child but he also is uh, uh to us you know uh, an example <laughs> to follow um and you know so when we look at it god through jesus loves his children uh and also we never waste god's time mm -hmm. you know we never waste jesus time if you look at this jesus you know, he, Jesus was a very busy in, individual. He was oh, a yeah, busy he was fellow. going around preaching and he, yeah. teaching and he, 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 he doing miracles. He probably a lot of times was very exhausted at times, I imagine. It says uh, at one point he, he wanted to go over and, and uh, you know, take some time to himself. When they're out on the boat, remember Jesus is in the back taking a nap when the biggest squall, uh, you know, comes mm -hmm. down over across the Sea of Galilee. But Jesus was napping. So, I mean, he, he was just like us. He needed his sleep. But uh we, we don't waste his time. That's one right. of the things. He, he always had time for people. Uh, that was one of the biggest things I learned from this is no matter whether it was a blind man, whether it was an adulteress, uh, or whether it was a little kid, he had time for them. Oh, yeah. So very interesting. So uh, what can we learn about people then from this passage? I mean, like I was saying earlier, that we are like the children at times. We mm -hmm. can be loving and compassionate, but at the same time, we can be that child that's throwing a temper tantrum because we're not getting mm -hmm. our way. How, how dare you do this to me? I deserve better. I've followed right. you all, right. all these years and you're putting me through this tough trial. But going back to the blind man, those circumstances that he puts us in are for his glory. Mm -hmm. So even though we may be going through a rough circumstance, don't throw a temper tantrum over it right. like a child, right. but learn from it and use it to glorify God. Use mm -hmm. it to glorify your heavenly parent. In your NLT version, uh, the word scolded, uh, the disciples scolded. Yeah. You know, and, and sometimes things don't fit into our plans. And it didn't fit oh, yeah. into the disciples' plans. And there they are scolding, you know. And uh, we can do that in our lives sometimes. If it doesn't fit into our plans, we can kind of give someone the business a little yeah. bit. And, uh, you know, that's not how we're to be. And another thing, uh, you know, you think about that I was thinking this whole time, when you were talking about parents, I wrote this down. You know, you ever heard the phrase, act your age? Yeah. You know what I mean? A act your age. That's a stance people have. Well, what if God would tell us, hey, act your age? In a spiritual sense. I know oh, yeah. I've been baptized since I was a teenager. 
I don't know about you, Logan, but I was baptized it, when I was five or six. Yeah. So if you think if, if you think how long we are along in our spiritual maturity, what if God would say at your age sometimes to us? We probably yeah. wouldn't like it, you know, yep. and he probably feels that way sometimes, though. Uh, so that was something that I was thinking about. And then going back, uh, you know, we're to be like children. That's what mm-hmm. God wants us to be. The, the, the terms that I was saying, he wants us to be happy. Yep. We need to be happy and go out and say, hey, we're happy because of what God's doing in my life. Mm-hmm. We need to be energetic. We need to go out and be uh, just energized to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, we need to be loving and compassionate towards others. Uh, and because that's what, you know, children usually are, are that way. We need to be caring, nurturing, uh, and dependent uh, upon Christ uh, mm-hmm. and, and our Father. Um, but it is those times where you said sometimes we want to be independent. Mm-hmm. And usually when we're independent, that's usually where things start going bad for us. Yep. So that's just kind of some of my thoughts tonight as we're, yep. we're studying here. So. Uh, anything else you want to add to what we read tonight, Logan? No, it was, I think we've covered a good bit there. Good. I well, mean, somebody in the comments may find, may have, when we were reading it, heard something and mm-hmm. was like, hey, this stood out to me, but you guys didn't talk about it. Put it down in the comments below. Just mm-hmm. We'd love to hear it because maybe we didn't think of it, and it'll right. give us a different perspective right. on it. Yeah, every so, week we are, we are just asking you, please be a part of this study. Uh, we want you to comment things that you learn, uh, things that you're grateful for, you know, the, the challenges. We just want you to really be a part of these devotionals. Uh, and that's the point of doing this is that we're hoping that we can witness to other people through this. But we're also hoping and in turn be witness too. Mm-hmm. We want to learn as we go through these studies every mm-hmm. week. Uh, this is our fifth week and we can't wait to continue going through uh, uh, the 14 weeks of this study during the, the, the summer and early fall. It's just been really exciting to see. So a uh, real fast and I will statement. You know, I, I, I want to be more like a child. Uh, but I was thinking the same thing. But, but not a child in a sense of the bratty child in the candy aisle that gets told no uh, and Walmart. You know, I want to be the child that understands that God knows what's best for me. Uh, just like my mom and dad. They knew what was best for me growing up. But mm-hmm. <laughs> old he thought he, I knew what was best. Uh, when, when you don't old, want to be the child that thinks that... No, you know better no. than mom and dad, but the child that will listen to the mm-hmm. instruction given by our Heavenly Father here and put it into practice mm-hmm. and just make life a lot better and get, receive those blessings from God through right. listening. I remember when growing up, black and white television, uh, but I remember an old show that used to be on and that's what I was going to leave people with tonight. You ever remember the show Father Knows Best? You ever heard of Father Knows Best? No. See, that shows my age now. Right? <laughs> We're good buddies, but I am a little bit older. Yep. But the show Father Knows Best was just what a good show. Uh, if you have never seen it, some of the people that's out there that's, that are older have probably watched it growing up and probably are like, yes, yes, what a great show. Uh, but Father Knows Best. Mm-hmm. And as his child, we need to let him uh, guide us and understand that he is always going to take care of his children. So that's kind of... My I will statement is I want to be more like a child and understand that God is there for me and will take care of me. Mm -hmm. So, all right, Logan, I'll go ahead and say the prayer. You have a couple weeks, so I'll go ahead and do it tonight. Dear God, we just want to come to you just thanking you uh, for being able to dive into your word once again. We understand that anytime we open these pages, that it is your breath uh, that we're taking in. This is your word. You are the one who inspired this word and you give it to us as a way to come to know you, to come to know your son, and to understand that this is the way we're supposed to live. We are imperfect people, uh, but that is why we need your son, so we can be seen as perfect. And as Romans uh, says, 8.1, there is no condemnation now that we are in Jesus Christ. And we are thankful for that, uh, Father, that you do not judge us uh, the way the teachers of the law judged the the adulteress a couple weeks back we studied. We're just thankful that you look at us uh, and see our hearts, and we know that we want to be... uh, part of you. We want to follow you and do your will. Just help every single one of us in this devotional tonight come to be like children. Help us to be uh, loving and energetic and and caring and compassionate. Uh, Just help us have the spirit of a a young child and and just to always understand that that you do know best, Father. Uh, We pray that somebody's life tonight is touched and that uh, Logan and or I or something we've said uh, or comment somebody has witnessed to through this devotional tonight and through the previous devotionals. We hope people are being witnessed and that their lives are being transformed by these Bible uh, devotionals that we're doing. Thank you for your uh, son and for loving us once again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
We want to thank you again for joining us for another devotional tonight. Uh, we hope you have a great night and God bless.